you should have drawn a quadrilateral. And I wanted you to do your best to make your quadrilateral not special, not a square, not a parallelogram, not a rectangle, not a quadrilateral which we know has special properties, but one that is as general as you can get it. All the sides are different. None of the angles are the same, all that kind of thing. Okay? Now here's what I want you to do. Follow these instructions carefully. But I think you'll find they're pretty easy to follow. If you have another colour there, this will be immensely easier. With another colour, and preferably with a ruler, because the more accurately you do this, the more awesome the effect will be. With a ruler, what I want you to do is to mark out, to locate and then mark out the midpoint of each one of the four sides of your unspecial quadrilateral, okay? Measure it out, make it as accurately accurate as is possible. Mark out all those midpoints. And once you have them marked out, do you measure it carefully? I then want you to join those midpoints because you have four sides, so now you have four points. And we can make them the four vertices of a new quadrilateral, okay? Now, once you've got your four points and you join them up, I want you to look at your shape. And then I also want you to look at the shape of the person next to you. Have a look. So, have you looked at the shape that you've created? Have you looked at the shape of the person next to you as well? Who hopefully had a decidedly different quadrilateral to begin with. And then suspiciously very suspiciously, have created with these midpoints a whole new shape which despite your best efforts to make a non-special quadrilateral, well, you just created a very special quadrilateral. What have you made? It's a parallelogram, right? Um, some of you, depending on the original shape you made, maybe you even accidentally created a rectangle because rectangles are, of course, a special, quad, uh, special parallelogram where you add what? What do you add? You add a... Think about a parallelogram like this, right? What would I have to do to these parallelograms to change them into rectangles? Yeah. Make the angles of the opposing sides different to the other opposing sides. Okay, yeah, sure. So if you want to think about it in terms of these angles here and how they relate to each other, that would work, it would create a rectangle. There's a simpler way to think about it though, and it has to do with the word rectangle. You guys know my obsession with names, right? Uh, you guys know what angles are. What is the prefix? of rectangle mean? Where, where have you seen this word before? Like for example, if there's like a, a picture hanging on the on the wall, right, it's a frame, right, and you say, hey, it's, it's wrong, I wanna rectify it. What does that mean? You wanna make it better. Makes you wanna, you wanna make it better, more specifically, it's not, it's not correct, you wanna make it right, don't you? Isn't that what you wanna do? In fact, that's what rectangle means, it means right angle. So all you have to do is take a parallelogram, and put a right angle in it. Because if you have opposite angles in a parallelogram, what's their relationship to each other? In a parallelogram, just look at it. What's the relationship between these two angles? They're, they're equal, right? I mean, it's, it's a bit more obvious on this one. They're equal. And that means that this pair is also equal. So if you put one, one right angle inside the parallelogram, what happens? Well, that makes the opposite angle also a right angle, which makes the other two also radicals. So all of a sudden, you put one in, you've got four. So, why is this the case? And if you haven't done this already, go ahead and um, add in those indicators that say, yeah, you've sure enough created a parallelogram. And even when you've got a polygon, which um, you know most people, almost everyone has drawn something like this. Uh, I always get confused. It's either called a concave or a convex polygon. I think it's convex, but anyhow. Um, you know, there are no sides that go inside the shape is what I'm referring to. Uh, all of the angles are either acute or obtuse as opposed to like this reflex angle in here. But even if you create this one, which um, Fanura reminded me is one of the cases you can do, uh, he doesn't care. He'll still make a parallelogram. Now my question is why? This is one of the things that I love about geometry. Geometry is just it's just magical, right? It just does things and it, it doesn't really explain why until you dig a little bit, okay? Now, what topic have we been in recently? What's this topic? Yeah. We've been in coordinate geometry and linear functions in particular, okay? Which is why hopefully you've, the cogs have been turning where you've been thinking about why I've showed you this shape. Now, there's a variety of ways to prove that if you have 
an arbitrary quadrilateral, if you join the midpoints of the sides, then you must always, without exception, create a parallelogram. But being that we're in the topic of quadratic geometry, I want to show you how we can do this using a coordinate system. Okay? So I asked you to draw this half an A4 page. What I want you to do is superimpose on top of it some coordinate axes. Can you do that for me? Just put it right smack bang in the middle. Now, one of the beautiful things about this is uh, I heard the question, just anywhere? And the answer is, yes, just anywhere. Because remember, when I asked you to draw this quadrilateral, what kinds of rules did I set for you about the four points that you were going to draw? What instructions did I give you? Pretty much nothing. There were no qualifications. In fact, I tried to make like anti-qualifications. I was like, don't do anything that would make this unusual. Literally put them anywhere, okay? So there's no rules that bind any of these points to each other or even to themselves. I mean, I've drawn them in all four quadrants, but you could put them all in the first quadrant if you wanted, or the second, or wherever you like. So how would we go about proving this? I'm going to pause for a moment. I've given you this clue in that one of the most efficient ways to do this is by coordinate geometry, but I'm going to pause and give you a couple of minutes to think. I've said this before and I'll say it again. One of the most important phrases in, um, in curriculum and syllabuses when learning mathematics is the phrase unrehearsed contexts. Unrehearsed Context. This is a question that is the exact opposite of everything you've had to deal with in the past of here's I've done 15 of these and now do one more That's just like all the others just with different numbers, okay? I've never asked you to do anything like this before. Maybe you've been exposed to something like this Maybe if you did an enrichment series before while you've been at school But all I'm going to give you is this premise number one. You can look at this through the lens of quarter geometry number two if you start with absolutely any quadrilateral we have observed, we've experimented as it were, we've taken a scientific approach, we've repeated the uh, experiment 24 times, 25, 26 times, okay? We've seen, okay, it looks like it happens, right? And we've repeated it, it <coughs> seems to be true. But in mathematics, we don't care if you experiment, we don't care if you observe it a million times. That's not enough for us. We want logic to demonstrate this is always true. We want to generalize. So I'm going to give you about five minutes to ponder and to think. You're welcome to actually talk with other people to try and come up with an idea. But I'd like you to have a stab at it first on your own. How would you go about proving that this shape here must, must, always be a parallelogram? Have a think. If you have an idea, call me over. <laughs> 